Okay, in this video I want to talk about uh, what I call the Universal Room. Um, it's not a very imaginative name, but it's uh, that's, just, that's just what I call it. Um, it's, 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 it's what I consider to be pretty much the most powerful argument against relativity. And it, uh, it's, I mean, it's a simple argument, and it's a... Uh, it's, it's... I uh, forgot what I wanted to say, as usual. Um, anyway, it's it's related to Galilean relativity, which is, um, you know, it's this whole idea of Galileo's ship. I don't want to say who Galileo is, you know. You, don't, you know, I don't want to take the time. Um, you know, you have Galileo's ship where, um, this is a search for a, uh, this is a Google sh uh, search for Galileo's ship. This is the images that come up when you search for Galileo's ship. Um, and this is basically Galilean relativity. You know, this is Galileo's perspective, I guess, in this one is the guy that's in the... This is a boat here, some crude drawing a boat, and there's like a little stick figure in here that's Galileo. He's a real skinny guy. Um, so, so, you know, this is a mast. He drops a ball from the, mat, from the top of the mast, and it falls along here from his viewpoint. Uh, looks like the ball falls parallel to the mast and doesn't have any other, you know, uh, any other vector or, you know, direction to its fall. It just falls straight down next to the mast as far as he's concerned because, because Galileo is like a really, uh, he's got blinders on. All he can basically see is his ship. He does, like, he completely ignores the rest of the universe. So all he sees is his ship and he sees the ball fall parallel to the mast. But you have a bystander's perspective say on the shore or something, looks at Galileo and when, when Galileo drops the ball, you know, the, the ship is moving compared to the bystander on the shore. So when Galileo drops his ball, it doesn't fall, you, you know, from, you can kind of see where it falls along the mast, but at the same time you see that it actually goes this way. It kind of curves this way because the boat is moving along and the ball uh, picks up the motion of the boat. So it stays, uh, it stays above the same part position relative to the boat, but if, uh, it falls this way and it also falls this way because it's moving along. It's, it's maintaining the position, its position relative to the same spot on the boat, and the boat's moving along, so the ball falls in this uh, sort of an arc, arcing path. Um, you know, and, and here Galileo's down inside the ship. Um, again, he's like. Uh, so so basically, you know, Galileo says uh, anything. I can, if I'm inside this boat, I can't see the rest of the universe. Um, I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist because, um, as far as I'm concerned, the inside of this boat is the entire universe. Says Galileo because he's like completely ignorant. Um, I, I mean, he's pretending to be completely ignorant. But um, any anything he can do in here, nothing he can do in here can. Uh, can prove to him that the that the his boat is moving relative to something in the outside universe. Um, he can't perform any experiments, so as far as he's concerned, he's he's motionless, even though the boat's moving like this. Because things, things inside here behave in in their motion. They behave as if they're. Uh, it's all relative to this boat. Galileo's reference frame is basically fixed to this boat. Um, here here's some other pictures of it. Uh, you know, that's, there, there's Galileo's boat. That is like, that's the boat Galileo would ride on if he was like lived in modern times. Um, anyway, that's that's Galilean relativity. He can't do anything to prove to himself that he's in motion in here. He's like pretending like he's completely ignorant of the rest of the universe. I'm gonna pause and dump this file right now before it gets too large. So anyway, Einstein basically, you know, took Galileo's uh, Galilean relativity and said, "Yeah, this this is true." But um, you know, after Galileo and before Einstein, uh, Maxwell came along and uh, said that um, you know, this uh, light has the speed of c, and it kind of implied, you know, relative to what is the speed of light c, and um, this. Uh, this this led to the notion that it's relative to the uh, luminiferous e uh, uh, ether, which uh, is the medium that can uh, that um through which light was propagated. So, you know, you should be able to detect the motion because if it's it's light travels at speed c relative to the medium 
that propagates it, then you should be able to detect that if we're in motion relative to uh, that medium. Um, so Einstein said, you know, the physical laws are supposed to be the same, uh, like, like Galilean relativity, your uh, physical laws will be the same in here. So we, we can either get rid of Galilean relativity because we failed to detect any motion relative to the ether, um, we need to get rid of Galilean relativity or we need to get rid of Maxwell's equations and Einstein said well we can keep both uh, and so uh, to do that you just say that time and space aren't constant so uh, that's how you retain both this and uh, you know you retain both this and Maxwell's equations which predict a uh, specific speed of light and you don't have to ask relative to what it's relative to whichever reference frame you happen to be in the stationary order of you so you, you maintain Galilean relativity and you keep Maxwell's equations you don't have to throw out either one that's 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 Einstein's relativity that's Einstein's version of uh, relativity of Galilean relativity so these are basic Einstein's relativity is basically Galilean relativity like on steroids or just slightly modified or whatever you want to call it. It's an extension of it. Um, and I'm going to argue this is incorrect. Uh, Galileo is actually incorrect because Galileo says we can't tell which one of these guys is really in motion. You know, Do we go by a reference frame attached to the ocean here or the shore or do we go by the one attached to the boat? You know, Every observer is going to attach a reference frame like someone uh, an observer that's stationary relative to the shore or the ocean here he's going that's going to be his reference frame so Galileo's ship is moving relative to that yet Galileo's in his ship and uh, he can't tell that he's moving because he's attaching his reference frame to here we can't say which one is actually correct because everything in the universe is moving um, so how can you unentangle it all and figure out which thing is really moving relative to the other things um, so you can't do it so uh, everything is relative and uh, I'm going to show that this is incorrect there you can determine there is an absolute reference frame Galilean, Galilean relativity and Einsteinian relativity says there is no absolute reference frame I'm going to show that there is a re absolute reference frame um, uh, before I do that I want to um, let me see if I want to go here now, I'm not going to bring a uh, that other stuff into it yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, continue on with the how I'm going to say that um, this is incorrect. Galilean relativity is incorrect. I'm gonna do that after I pause this video real quick to dump it. So how do you how do you disprove that uh, Galilean relativity? How do you disprove that? Uh, how do you disprove Galilean relativity? Um, what what you do is let's just take two objects. Let's say like uh, here's an object. Let's uh, do a square. Um, here's an object. Um, if you're you, you know, and there's relative motion between them. If you're if there's nothing else in the universe, you can't. There's nothing else against which to judge the motion here. How do you know which one of these is actually moving? I mean, because if there's an from from the viewpoint of an observer, say, stationary on this thing, you know, when there's relative motion, this guy is going to attach his coordinate system to this block here, and he's going to say, well, this thing's obviously moving. It's moving up this direction, you know. And meanwhile, the guy that the observer, male or female, whatever, that's attached to this, he's going to say he's going to attach his coordinate system to this and say. Uh, no, it's this. It's this. It's the observer on this that's moving. He's moving down this way. Um, you know, from one one observer says the person's moving up this way. The other observers uh, need to do that so they don't combine. The other observer says this guy's moving down this way. So you know who's correct? They you know they're both correct because you know there's nothing against which to judge their mo motion other than this or this. But how do you know which reference frame? Is the correct one very simple? How it's very simple. How you know it? Let's um. What um? Yeah, it's very simple, and yet I'm like lost for words how to explain it. I'm just, it's because I'm trying to. I'm looking at this, trying to. Um, not, it's not completely obvious exactly how, but um. To do it from this, I, I'm trying to think if I need to get a different. Uh, 
object here is all I'm saying, not to doctor what I'm trying to say, but just to make it more easily explicable or whatever you want to call it. So let's say, um, just do a little bit of creating here, let's see. Let's say this is an object and this is an object. This this makes it a little more ob obvious. Let's say, um, you know, this this thing is in here. Uh, there, there's relative motion between them. So, you know, is, th is this thing moving? Or is this thing moving? You, you know, there's relative motion. Who can say which one is actually moving? Well, it, you, you can tell which one is actually moving. Let's let's pretend, you know, that one observer attaches a coordinate system to this, the other one attaches it to this. Let's pretend, you know, obviously, uh, um, to to figure out if I'm not sure how to say this too. You know, unless they're both cont uh, pretending like they're completely ignorant of the surrounding universe, you know, this, this, the observer on this one is going to know whether or not there is anything beyond his thing. I mean, he's going to know if this is like, he's going to be able to know if he's able to move or not. He's going to be able to look out, out at the rest of the universe and say, you know what, I can move. Um, I could jump off this thing and keep on going in any direction, up, down, left, right, whatever. But suppose, you know, suppose there's a box around this, or, or a cube. Um, right now I'm just making this two-dimensional, but, you know, this is easily three-dimensional. You know, now, this guy here, he can't move. You, you know, pretend, pretending that, pretending that these are all, that this object is flush against the walls of this other one. So, I mean, I just, it's, just this way so you can actually see that they're not the same object but pretending pretending that this object here has no room in which to move then in that case it should be obvious that this thing is move the one moving and unless uh unless this larger room is actually moving too uh, in which case uh just both of them have to pretend that we don't know that but um so, so in in that case, uh, you know, if this bigger, larger room is moving, the larger box is moving, then it could easily be that well, maybe this thing is actually stationary, and it's a uh, simply the case that this lar that that this three quarters square is like sta stationary relative to this. There's no relative motion between those two, but there's just relative motion between the ball at the center. You know, it could be this, or, or it could be this. I, I mean, in this case, again, once again, you don't know which one is actually in motion unless you know whether there's a universe beyond this box here. You know, in, in which case, uh, well, so we know there's a wider universe. There's this, this, this box has room in which to move because, you know, it just can't move any further past this. So in that case, it becomes more complicated because, you know, may, maybe... Maybe this this box here is moving relative to this, and this is stationary relative to that, and this is moving. Uh, you, you know, anyway, we come, there's all kinds of ways you could write, describe the motion. But again, who can say? Um, <clears throat> the way you de you know, how do you decide? Um, I'm, I'm going to pause again real quick and dump this. Okay, okay, so I'm just going to keep this in the simple case. I'm going to go back down here uh, just to one. Um, how do you know which reference frame? Uh, um, how do you know where to attach your reference frame? Like, should an observer on here attach his reference frame to the ball, or should he attach it to this, or should he attach it to this? Um, how, do, how do you know? Um, I, I say you know because which thing is capable of movement um you know if this thing is capable of movement this one must be the one that's moving because because the the other objects aren't capable of movement remember we're assuming that beyond this square there's nothing um 
you know, this is basically the bounds of the observe. This is basically the bounds of the universe. There's no space beyond this. Um, so th this this thing this this thing is incapable of movement. And so, if, if you look back at Gal uh, Galilean relativity, you know this this Galileo here. He's attaching his reference frame to his ship. Um, but, you know, Galileo can walk across this boat. So, so when he's moving through this boat, why does he not, like, take his reference frame, detach it from the ship, and attach it to himself, and pretend that his boat is moving past him? You know, uh, I mean, obviously he has legs, but we're pretending that these com people are completely ignorant, because that's, that's what they're doing. He's basically ignoring the surrounding universe, and it's like he's not looking out the window or porthole or whatever to judge his motion against the ocean or the land or something. I mean, these guys are completely ignorant. That's that's part of the problem with things like relativity and stuff. You have to pretend complete ignorance on the part of these bumpkins in here that are incapable of looking out a porthole and stuff. And so, you know, when like anyway, what I was saying, when he gets up off this box, whatever he's on, and moves across, the, moves through this thing, walks up the side of here, or gets out here and walks across here, why does he not detach his reference frame from the boat and attach it to himself? It's because he's contained within this boat. He attaches his... He knows that he is the contained and is capable of movement, so he, 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 he makes his own personal reference frame subservient to this one. He, he, he takes on the viewpoint of this reference frame because he knows that he is capable of motion as far as he's concerned he doesn't the boat isn't capable of motion he has he's pretending complete ignorance of the outside universe so y you know in here too um this the bystander that's on the shore he's looking at galileo he's attaching his this bystander is attaching his reference frame to the like the earth around him or the shore or whatever you want to call it so he sees the ball moving like this because it's uh the ball is moving relative to him, and so he sees the ball curving. Um, so, and you can see, you know, Galileo is basically, he's basically, picture this little square behind him is like a, I don't know, so they're projecting their coordinates onto it. And this represents like the background of, this background is attached to whatever particular reference, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. Galileo has a smaller, like screen behind him and he's projecting his coordinates onto that screen and that screen is like motionless relative to his boat and he's projecting these coordinates onto that screen back there the 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 guy on the shore he's got another screen behind galileo's and he's that's stationary relative to the earth or shore whatever he's on he's projecting his galileo's coordinates onto that screen behind galileo's screen because that screen's the one stationary so you, you know, and this bystander is doing that. He's not attack. He's not like assuming Galileo's viewpoint because this bystander knows that Galileo has a space in which to move. There's a larger space around him, and this bystander is pretending that there's no larger space around him. So he's like sticking his coordinate system here. You know, each one is con con uh, completely ignoring the surrounding world and he's just attaching it to the largest structure that he thinks is incapable of movement or you know I like to call it the contained Galileo knows that he is contained within a larger space this bystander knows that he is contained within a larger space that encompasses Galileo's space you know the the contained always attach their uh, reference frame to the container in which they believe themselves contained uh, this bystander doesn't accept Galileo's container because the bystander knows that the container is larger and encompasses at least the bystander's uh, known universe. So, you know, as far as Galileo is concerned, this is the container. As far as the bystander is concerned, this is the container, and that container encompasses, that container contains Galileo's container. So, so... Each, each observer attaches his reference frame to the largest container of which he is aware or of which he is pretending he's aware. Galileo, like I said, is completely ignoring the existence of this larger container. So I'm, I'm going to pause again real quick. 
you know, you can you can look at this and say, well, you you're not done anything uh, because we still can't tell which one is actually moving because it's just relative motion between these two. You know, Galileo's container could be the one that's at rest, and the larger container could be the one that's in motion. Um, yeah, and that's that's exactly my point. Um, get the bystander he's got see all these guys have to simply look out their window and see that you know is there a larger universe around me or is there not Galileo needs to look out here and see that hey there's a big wide world around here I've got plenty of room in which to move you know and the guy on the shore this bystander he needs to look out the window of his planet so to speak and say hey there's a wider universe around me I've got plenty of room in there's plenty of room in which my planet can move um, my planet is also contained within a larger universe. So, um, waiting on my computer to catch up here. So, uh, you know, my contention is that both Galileo and that bystander, you know, let me go back there. Even though they, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not they know which one of these is moving, there is obviously a big huge wider universe around both of them and both of them are obviously capable of movement you know if he's if he's attaching his uh the bystander is attaching his reference frame relative to the earth um you know the earth allegedly you know i don't even want to get into geocentrism right now the earth allegedly could be moving through space because the earth has plenty of room in which to move so th this reference frame attached to the earth or the shore even that's an incorrect reference frame because obviously it has room in which to move if something is capable of movement then it cannot be the proper reference frame uh, to which you know it, it can't be the thing to which you attach your coordinate system y you know once once you get up to this sort of a situation where this where this uh, where this thing is incapable of moving, doggone it, my computer's not cooperating. Where this thing is incapable of movement, like this, y you know, it's like co terminal or something with this larger box, whatever you want to call it, it's incapable of movement. Then this thing obviously must be the one that's, that's truly in motion um, because because there's a this box, like we said, there's no wider universe around it. This box itself has no room in which to move. Forget this black big space around here. We're, we're saying that this, this box is like the end of the... Uh, there's no more space in which to move. You have to have space in which to move. And beyond this box, there is no space. So it can't possibly be moving. You know, you can, you can say, well, still, I mean, that box could still be there's still relative motion how do we know which one is actually moving be because this one can't move I mean I mean if if this thing has no sp space movement requires space in which to move or space time if you want to like get technical out and stuff and this thing has no space in which to move so it can't possibly be moving it doesn't matter if this guy that's on here he doesn't know that there's no more space beyond this box his ignorance doesn't change the fact that he's the one that's truly in motion because this thing here whether this observer knows it or not this thing here has no space in which to move like, like i said movement obviously requires space it doesn't matter that an observer here is completely ignorant as to whether there's space in which this larger box can be moving doesn't matter whether he knows it or not if he chooses to attach a reference frame to himself he's incorrect be because this thing here has to be the absolute reference frame because there's like no larger frame to attach it to and there's this frame is incapable of movement so this thing has to be the thing that is truly moving relative to this larger coordinate system um, and that's my idea of the universal room obviously I didn't do it all but I mean let me I'm trying to debate I'm going to leave it on here now I'm trying to debate whether it paused this video yet because I tend to like start rambling and forget the time and then my file will get too large and it'll dump it'll like crash and I'll lose everything I've already said so I'm gonna pause again real quick so I, I guess I'll put forth like a I don't know if you want to call it a principle or whatever but you can you can say basically that if something is contained 
it cannot be the absolute reference frame and if something is contained any reference frame attached to it is in effect you know it works but it's like it's it's just a working frame it's like it's almost sort of invalid because there is an ultimate reference frame so that that reference frame is like subservient to a larger reference frame any any reference frame that's attached to something that is contained that reference frame is automatically subservient to the largest reference frame possible. Um, let me pull out a picture here I want to use to illustrate. Something's probably going to be on here too large. Okay, it didn't turn out too large. This this is like a just just pretend that this is like the entire observable universe. Um, just like this, these are all galaxies. They're not just stars. This is the entire observable universe. I guess it's sort of circular here, but um, you know, can you go for? I'm not even going to address the, the thing. Uh, you know, the argument of is there anything? <clears throat> where where does space end? You know, like is there anything beyond the far farthest star? You know, like say these stars here. Is there anything beyond that? I'm not getting into that debate right now. I'm I'm just gonna. Let's just, you, you know, you've got e every, like, each little piece in here has its own reference frame attached to it. But, you know, you can enclose this universe. This, this entire structure here is contained. This is the entire observable universe. It is contained. So, so it basically sort of has, like, imaginary walls around it. Could, this could be spherical, it could be square, it could be some oblong weird shape, but it, this this entire structure here is contained. Anything within this, anything within here is contained. Nothing in here is the container. This is the container. This is the contained. Thus, given our principle, everything, every reference frame that's attached to any of these objects and is fixed to any of these objects, it is automatically subservient to this larger fixed reference frame. It doesn't matter if the observers associated with each of these little reference frames, these little tiny fixed reference frames, it doesn't matter if they are can't detect this, uh, I call them the walls of the universe, it doesn't matter if they can detect these or not. It's there regardless of their like ignorance of it. And if this is the universe, you know this this is all of space uh is there anything beyond it um i'm as, i'm assuming that like this is the bounds of the universe um and there's no space in which to move beyond that i mean we can get in we can get into some kind of like philosophical discussion about like you know what what's what's beyond the universe um but 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 this is when i say universe i'm talking about like the end of space you know let's not talk let's not argue about is space infinite or is it uh, closed or open or whatever? Just forget that. This this entire we we can like let, like we can take one of these reference frames, you know, one of these tiny little reference frames. Let's, let's, uh, that's gonna mess up. We can take one of these tiny little reference frames, say this little reference frame there is attached to that star or galaxy or whatever it is at this scale. We, we can take that little reference frame and we can keep expanding it, but eventually it's like going to be uh, superimposed or, um, what would you call it, superimposed or coincidental with this largest reference frame uh, and you can't uh, what am I saying I mean you can you can you can keep on this guy can keep on moving his reference frames outward like taking it off his little galaxy and like attaching it to something else that's you know he can he can contain this little group of space and then he can say well wait a minute this little group of space there's even space beyond that so he can contain this larger space he's just gonna have to keep pushing his reference frame back until there is no more space y you know we're, we're pretending that this entire universe it, there's no space in which this 
universe in which this collection of stars and galaxies and planets and superclusters and all that there's no space in which it can move this entire collection cannot like translate through any sort of space because there's no space to do it in so you so you know there is basically you have a boundary to the universe here not uh, and nothing can go beyond it nothing can move beyond it so um So Galileo in here, Galileo in this uh, bystander, Galileo needs to push his reference frame back to the Earth's reference frame, and then that reference frame needs to keep pushing on back. So like, push your reference frame back, Galileo, you know, keep on going, keep on pushing that reference frame back. You've got to like, y you know, it's all well and good to attach your reference frame to that ship, but there's a larger universe out there, and you need to keep on like, like, attaching your reference frame to something larger and larger until you get to like you can't you can't move your reference frame out anymore and congratulations you found the ultimate reference frame and it doesn't matter whether you know this 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 structure around the universe can be entirely uh our in our minds it doesn't have to be a physical structure i mean obviously um if this is obviously when I say we need to keep pushing the reference frame out there, I'm not I'm not saying we need to build a wall around the universe. I mean, obviously that would be technologically impossible for us at this present stage, and not to mention I doubt there's enough material in the universe to like construct this sort of a wall around the universe. I mean, what are you going to dismantle all these stars and like s just build a huge wall around nothing? Uh, so I I mean it's sh sure it's physically impossible to I mean it's not physically impossible it's theoretically possible it's just not very likely that we would even be capable of doing it but that doesn't change the fact that this thing actually exists I mean you can contain the universe even if it's only mentally there there is a um, I'm gonna pause this again real quick okay um, so so now I'm gonna bring in a different uh, I'm going to leave that picture there. Bring in a different picture. Let me get rid of all this stuff. Bring in a different picture here to... Okay. Uh oh, I just wanted to um, do one other thing real quick before I do what I said I was getting ready to do. I want to bring um, this other picture... I need to scale that back. Up um, I'm bringing it up it's just a tiny bit more. This is see. It's it's not just me that puts contain. This is this is um. Let me just say where this picture is from. Let's see. It's a. Where did I get that? It's from a Google search. So it's is this here? It's a observable. It says observable observable universe versus entire universe. Uh, so so. Theoretically, I mean, I haven't been to that page, I haven't verified this, but theoretically this, like, represents the entire observable universe. I don't know if it's an actual, like, some kind of telescopic thing or not, but I anyway, it's a natural, ten you have a natural tendency to put containers around these things. Someone has, this person has, like, built a container around this. It's not a square, but, like, you can see the container that's been built around this, so, like, this is the entire observable universe. It's a natural thing to do. And that's that's why, you know, Galileo, he attaches his his reference frame here, which is perfectly understandable. Let me get to that other thing. You know, it's understandable for why this bystander attaches his reference frame here, but it's understandable, but it's incorrect because they can keep on attaching... They can keep on moving their ref... There's... There's larger reference frames. That, there is obviously larger reference frames beyond these two reference frames. <clears throat> you can't pretend like this is your... And that, that's where relativity comes in. There's, there's obviously all these other reference frames and uh, 
but there is a, an absolute frame, is, is what I'm saying. I mean, relativity doesn't recognize, refuses to recognize that there is an absolute frame. And it's like I was saying, it's the container that would contain the entire universe. It would contain all of space. It, it's the point at which, you know, if there was a physical container, a physical structure containing us, like a hollow cube or a sphere or something, that that container would not be able to move because there's nothing... There's no space in which it can move. There's no space beyond its walls in which it can move. It's like its walls are like co-terminal or, or are like coincidental with the bounds of space where there's no more space beyond that. Um, so, uh, so, and that would be the absolute reference frame. So Galileo and that bystander, they need to keep on moving back their... Um, reference frames because you know choose your small one but it's 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 subservient every single one of these reference frames like i said is is like subservient or overridden by this larger uh absolute reference frame and, um and i want to bring in this other thing i this is a this this is a a program I like from like the uh, I guess it was like the late 90s or early late 90s early 2000s um, it's called Ray Dream Studio I like this program back in my back in the day as a 3D modeling program um, make it a bit larger and, and this was like you know, if you're familiar with 3D modeling programs, it should be obvious what this is. You could, you, you know, this is like the the modeling room or like the stage where it, it's a three-dimensional thing. You know, three three planes and everything. It's three dimensions, so you have objects in here. And okay, bring the other one out. So that's that. It's a thing like that. But it, and I'll bring in another picture of it. Oops. <laughs> I was trying to click the X to close that window. That's crazy. <laughs> You know, you know it, it would have this is it with stuff in it. it it would all these things in it would project like a bounding box onto each plane of this of this room they would they would all project their individual bounding box and you could like gra grab say this is the bounding box of the fish or this one is or something you could grab it and you could like drag it and when you drag this little bounding box here, it would move this thing in like this direction or this direction. You, you drag, you like drag its, grab its projection over here that's on the wall. You could drag it up and down and like this, and likewise with this one, you could. So so anyway, they would all project like their bounding box onto the wall. And this is what I'm sort of like meaning with the absolute reference frame. This you can almost picture picture these stars here basically in this modeling room all these galaxies and everything are going to project onto this wall they're going to project onto this plane and this plane and this plane because this is a 3d structure here you know some would say it's a four-dimensional structure but we can get into that later i'm, I'm not i'm not debating whether it's a four-dimensional structure i'm just examining it from three dimensions right now but you know they all these stars would be you know this little star here it would be projecting over to here it would be projecting here and it would be projecting here so it, it doesn't matter if this thing was in motion it may, might be making some kind of crazy motion but it's its motion would all ultim ultimately be projected onto here it would make tracks on here where you could track its motion against these ultimate coordinate systems you, you know it, it might be making a certain type of movement in relative to one of these other stars in here it would make be making a certain type of movement but it would be making a completely different type of movement relative to this coordinate system and this coordinate system is the one you have to go by because there is no larger coordinate system possible so all motion has to be relative to this absolute one and it, it, every whatever track these stars what the star makes on here and here and here that is its absolute coordinate system because beyond this coordinate system things are incapable of movement so this is like the be-all end-all like god 
sort of reference frame. It's like, yeah, I'm bringing God into it. I'm talking like it's the supreme reference frame. It's there, uh, every single one of these little reference frames is subservient to, to this ultimate reference frame. They can all have their little individual reference frames, but they, they are like overridden by this ultimate one. You know, whatever motion they determine that these other stars are making relative to them, or they are making relative to the other ones, it's it's like a false... They're gathering false data because they're using like this local coordinate system that they, they need to be using this large one. And even regardless of whether or not they can actually see their coordinates or judge against this ultimate ultimate reference frame, it is still there. There is still this ultimate reference frame around the entire universe whether we are aware of its existence or not it's it's still there and and so because it's still there um, we can't ignore it I mean it's not safe to say like well we can't physically detect it because um so we can safely ignore it no you can't it's not that sort of a case because it I'm gonna pause real quick I thought I was going to pause real quick. Okay, now I pause. You, you know, I, I can. You, you might not like the idea of this universal room, but I could see a time where, or a possibility where, say, someone could sit in a spaceship outside this, like, say, right here or something, and they could they could look at this as a whole and gather information on the positions of all everything within here. They could gather information on it. Um, you know, they'd have to like. Uh, calculate travel time of light and everything take that into account as to where this thing's position would be and stuff but they could they could like gather a snapshot of this whole structure you know obviously this would have to be a very very advanced people or something but you know they might have they'd have to have some kind of wildly super computer that could uh, who, who even knows what kind of computer it would be but they could they could feed this information into here and calculate like the they could count they could figure out the in the like the movement of all these within this mass of a whole they could figure out all the inter all the uh interrelations of movement in here they could figure out how all every single bit of movement relates to every other single bit of movement and they could like they could construct some kind of picture of you know this thing is moving like this relative to this and they could they could they could build a picture that would like give an accurate overall picture of which thing is truly in motion relative to some other thing or, or um, they, they would even build like a bounding box just like this and like use this overall coordinate system and figure out the relationships of everything they, they could do that I mean that's that's not outside the realm of the realm of possibility I guess I mean I, I, we couldn't obviously do it and um, who knows what we'll be able to do in billions of years though um we're still around that long and um you, you know this it, it's theoretically possible to do that um so so if if it's theoretically possible and there are no physical laws that would disbar doing this then you can do it, it i mean i mean it may be impossible for us to do it technologically it may be completely infeasible and impractical for us to do it and be way beyond us throughout it will never be able to do it but there are no physical laws forbidding doing that so you can do it if there's nothing if there's no physical laws doing it uh, forbidding forbidding the doing of that thing then you can do it I mean um, there there's nothing there's no physical law preventing my preventing me from throwing myself off a cliff there's just my inhibition against wanting to kill myself and stuff so it's it's like it, it's it's theoretically possible for me for to for me to do it but it's like it's almost impossible for me to do it i, I mean it's it's possible for anyone to do it but i won't do it so it's so it's that sort of a thing it's 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 possible to do it so um and the next thing i want to get at is um get rid of this one and get a different graphic out here be, be, because this this sort of universal room will actually it'll have 
consequences. It will settle the debate between length contraction and simultaneity and everything. And I'm going to... This is another picture from Ray Dream Studio. Same room, they're, they're modeling this this sort of a thing. Um, this was my favorite model and modeler in Ray Dream Studio. Um, <clears throat> it's see, see, you've got a pipe thing going on here, and this pipe is projecting. It looks different, you know. It projects like from from this way. It projects this like this onto here. This way, it just looks like a straight line. You know, if you got a circle here and. Um, just due to the way this modeler works, it's not projected on there yet, this thing yet, but it's, um, this circle should be projected behind onto this, this thing, this, this is like the modeling plane or something where, anyway, I don't want to go into the intricacies of Ray Dream Studio, this isn't a tutorial on that, but, you, you know, it, it projects, different objects are going to project a different shape on each of these planes, and, and um, in the relativity of simultaneity, I'm going to bring in a graphic from another one of my videos. It's um, <clears throat> let me see where it is. Should uh, I find them both together? I'll just bring them like this. We got uh, that's not the one I wanted. Uh oh, I guess I can use that one too. Okay. So th this let me get rid of this. Just well, I want to use that again. Let me let me dump this video again real quick. Just remember this. I'm gonna, I'll explain this in a minute. Okay, is this thing started yet or not? Okay, so this, this, this I've got another video on this, uh, but just to, let's just say this, this is two different structures here, yeah, uh, this, this, like this, this is, anyway, this is two different structures here, you can see what they look like separately, that's, like this is one structure and this is another structure. Um, One structure, it's in one structure, another structure. These, in this case, they're uh, they're at rest relative to each other, so you can see what they look like when they're at rest relative to each other. This uh, this one is in motion relative to this one. In other words, from from an observer attached to this this structure, this one is in motion at at a. Uh, in this case, it's like 86.6% uh, .6 of the speed of light. Its length contracted 50%. And meanwhile, from an observer attached to this one, it's the other structure that's in motion and is length contracted by 50%. So my my whole point about this is, I've got another whole other couple of videos with explaining exactly what this is, but it doesn't matter what it is right now. Just remember there's relative motion between those two structures. Each one of these, if we take like a snapshot moment of the entire universe, or at least just of this one structure, you know, let's just pretend these are the only two structures in the universe and put them in our room here like this one is. Depending upon which, you know, if if this thing is actually length contracted, let's, let's, let's pretend this is like sideways here, so this is going like this. You know, this end is here and this end is here like this and it's projecting. Um, this, this is like a side view, just like this thing is a profile view. So... Depending upon which one of, if this, whether this one's con length contracted or this one's length contracted, will change the what the projection onto this, onto this reference frame over here. If it's, if it's this shape, it, it'll be this shape because uh, this thing is length contracted. This is the projection on here is going to look like sort of, well, this is going to look like this thing in profile. It's going to be like sort of a hot dog bun looking thing with like a big long hot dog sticking out the ends of the bun here. It's and, and if it's if this thing is actually if if this thing is actually length contracted, it's going to make like a just a, like a square shape because because this thing won't be sticking out the sides of this, so they won't be projected onto here. Assuming this thing is like a 
that's be, assuming this thing is like solid here i mean just pre pretend that you know it, it, then it'll look exactly like this projected over here and if it's this it'll look exactly like this projected over here so there will be an action there is an actual absolute fact as to which one of these is actually in motion and you determine that by the shape it makes on this projection of this universal room and it doesn't doesn't matter if we're even capable of uh, going out there and saying oh let's see what it looks like on the universal on this thing to determine which one's really linking track it doesn't matter whether we can do that or not it's still projecting onto this it doesn't matter whether we can see the projection or not it's still there and there's so there has to be a matter of fact as to which one of these is length contracted you know there's other reasons that i go into that there has to be an actual physical fact as to which one's length contracted but you know this is the most basic one there's like there has to be an absolute fact um at this point i think i'm done i'm just going to wrap it up here now i think i've said everything i wanted to say um so uh, um relativity the reason uh, the reason i do not believe in relativity is i be rel relativity does not allow for the existence of this absolute reference frame it doesn't recognize it relativity just uh, relativity allows each one of these guys to consider that their reference frame is like the absolute frame I mean, there are no absolute frames in relativity, but as far as each observer is concerned, their frame is absolute. So, you, so relativity basically has like <clears throat> every reference frame is equally valid, basically. Um, but, but you know, every reference frame is not equally valid. There, there's um, each one of these guys cannot have his own reference frame that is equally valid compared to all the other ones. It's, it's. Um, it just doesn't. These guys need to keep moving their reference frames backwards until, like I said, until they arrive at this one. Um, you know, Galileo here, this, the Galileo, he needs to, uh, he needs to detach his reference frame the little from the little screen that's behind him here, and it, reattach it to this larger screen back here. Even as this bystander needs to detach his little screen back here and attach it to some larger screen. Maybe it's a galaxy or something. I don't know what, but you just, th these reference frames just need to be keep pushing back until until basically they've arrived here. Come on, computer. Until they've arrived here. You know, r relativity doesn't allow this, and that that's why you know relativity denies an absolute reference frame, and I believe there has to be an absolute reference frame. I think that should be completely obvious and. You know, obviously people that believe in relativity don't b agree with me that it's completely obvious or they have never considered it before. I don't know which it is, but um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the b most basic argument against relativity because, you know, relativity's most... B that needs to stop. Um, okay. No, relativity's most basic assertion is that there is no absolute reference frame. And my most basic assertion is that there is an absolute reference frame. So I cannot believe in relativity. I can't subscribe to it because I, I disbelieve. I think relativity's most basic assumption or its most basic postulate is incorrect. There is an absolute reference frame. And so I cannot believe in relativity. You know, like, I don't believe it's a matter of belief. It it's a matter of one is one is physical actuality and the other is not so um that, that that anyway this is like i think this is the most basic argument against relativity there are plenty of other ones but this is like the most basic one the most i think it's the most irrefutable one well, i shouldn't even say that because there's um i think there is actually physical impossibilities kind of the physical impossibilities of relativity actually like are are more persuasive actually because um, any anyway, I guess I guess I've covered everything I wanted to say in the in this video. Yeah, um, one th one other thing I want to say about 
Now let me get that picture back on here. You know, as far as this this absolute reference frame goes, um, then then you have to ask, well, uh, what's light's disposition toward this? Is is like, is this? You, you know, if relativity is incorrect, light almost has to have like a, a a reference frame of its own, or or a luminiferous ether, almost has to exist. And and what's its what's its disposition? relative to this absolute reference frame. Is it stationary relative to this? Does light move relative to this or does light remain stationary relative to this? Is this, I, um, that's one question. I don't know where I was going with that, but you know, that's a question that has to be asked and you know, maybe it doesn't need to be asked. Maybe it's obvious and I'm just not thinking right now. So anyway, I'm, that's basically all I wanted to say in this video. Hopefully this is a shorter one than my usual videos, but um, I think I'm done. This is my concept of the universal reference room. Not the universal reference room, the universal room. Um, this is Galileo was wrong, Einstein was wrong, I guess. You know, any, any anyway, uh, get, another thing, getting back to, you know, Einstein says we need to... Uh, it gets to the point where you have to say, do we reject Maxwell or do we reject uh, Galileo because we can't have them both. And Einstein says, oh yeah, wait a minute, we can. We just make time and space inconstant. Um, and we retain them both. But going back to that original question, Einstein, should we uh, get rid of this or get rid of that? Get rid of Galilean relativity because it's false. That, that's my opinion on the matter, and that, that's why I disagree with relativity, because Einstein says retain it. I say reject it, Einstein says retain it. And so, and so I don't accept relativity. And it is not a matter of physical fact that relativity has been, like, supported by the evidence. I go, I've got other videos about that, too, and that's, that's more arguments, but anyway. So I, I reject relativity at that most basic point where Einstein says, do we, re, do we accept Galilean relativity and reject Maxwell or do we accept Maxwell and reject Galilean relativity? He says we retain both of them. I say no, we reject Maxwell. So I, I fundamentally disagree with Einstein and that's why I don't accept relativity. Be, because uh, you have to, at the very start, you have to accept uh, Einstein's assertion that we retain Galilean relativity and I reject that. That's like the most basic starting point of relativity. So, and I reject it, so I'm just repeating myself, so I'm done now. Back again. Uh, I, think, I think I just said that I reject Einstein's assertion that we reject Galilean relativity. What I meant was like, uh, we re I reject Einstein's assertion that we retain Galilean relativity. That's that's what I meant to say. I think I said it backwards. But um, I anyway, you know, uh, Galilean relativity is like a fundamental part of special relativity. And uh, if you reject it, if you reject Galilean relativity, you like de facto reject special relativity, which is, you know, that's what I do because I disagree with the Einstein's retention of Galilean relativity. It has to be rejected. So like Einstein and I part companies like in the first couple of pages of his book or, or like <laughs> of his uh, explanation of relativity is like the, the fundamental, you, you know, within like just he barely opens his mouth and I like reject what he says because we part company right at that fork where do you, ex do we, retain Galilean relativity or do we reject it? Einstein goes down one path, I go down the other. So I cannot accept Einstein's relativity. And now I'm done.